So we'll talk about IoT assurance and self-provisioning. Uh, as Sanjo said uh, in the beginning, oh, we've uh, we've showed this uh, last year. We showed this, uh, I think, even a year before, where uh, IoT assurance service uh, was designed to uh, to solve the two specific use cases when when we talk about access control. One is for IoT or we can call them unattended devices. The other one is for BYD for you know unmanaged uh, unmanaged device access to the network. We are leveraging multiple pre-shared key concept here, but we are deploying this at scale. And so one of the things that that uh, that we've done was to you know eliminate MAC addresses from the equation, where we are just uh, letting the uh, device on board based on the fact which key or which PSK the client the client is is using. We are doing segmentation, like uh, VLAN-based segmentation, role-based segmentation, and we're doing some uh, traffic engineering where we can say, okay, this key is going to be tunneled to uh, DMZ, the other key is going to be locally bridged and things like that. Plus, we've added quite a, quite a lot of things on the uh, lifecycle um, management aspects of, the, uh, of our MPSK solution. One thing we haven't showed yet was the self onboarding or self provisioning uh, aspect of uh, of the IoT assurance which is relevant to the BYD use case how do users uh, how are how are they able to get themselves uh, a unique personalized PS case let me let me demo this demo this in a second so i'm going to switch back so what we have here is we have a concept of a PSK portal that is connected to uh, a single sign-on. In this case, this is Azure, with like standard sample connector, so it will integrate into any uh, IDP whatsoever. We will then say, okay, if the client is uh, authorized and authenticated, uh, authenticated using single sign-on, we will create a personalized PSK for this specific SSID with this last phase complexity settings, and we will determine, you know, how frequently the uh, uh, end users will need to rotate their credentials. So how does the process looks like from uh, an end user perspective? So an end user, let me just open it somewhere here, would go to a PSK portal and will then redirect, oh, one second, uh, should not have anything cached. So it will then uh, redirect to a single sign-on for authentication. So I'm going to just log in with my test account in Azure. So if you have MFA, MFA will kick in at this point as well. It will then bounce back to our PSK portal. It will gener generate a unique passphrase for that specific user, taking your username, taking your email address from Azure as the key name. So you have the identity of the user attached with the, with the passphrase. It generates the QR code that you can either scan with your, with your camera or you can uh, actually, if you're uh, running this from a mobile device, you can click on the QR code. It will ask you to join the network. So I'm going to just demo this real quick. I'm going to take my device. I'm going to turn the Wi-Fi on. I'm going to open up a camera app. I'm going to point to this QR code. It will ask me to join the, the network. That's it. I'm now connected to to this network, that's really it, right? So you're generating a unique uh, user-specific key. You can connect all of your uh, all of your devices so, so that uh, that that will use that key without registering their MAC addresses. None of that, right? And it's completely self-service. The same thing. We are we are even extending that to. Uh, to let the users rotate their credentials as and when they need to, right? So that's completely uh, off, uh, off IT hands. Now, what you'll see from the visibility point of view, you will then look at the PSK. That you see the PSK has been created for that specific user. We now see a client devices that are active uh, for for that given uh, for that given PSK. You would see them. Uh, as they come in, you, you can see the historic usage of that key, et cetera, et cetera. That's the BYD portion. But what I wanted to also show is what what are the outcomes, what, how we actually were able to help customers over, over that last one year. 
So if we look at, <clears throat> at this slide, uh, we've, uh, we've done a number of use cases. So we can look at the first example where you know, a, a Fortune 75 uh, retailer uh, used our IoT assurance to simplify onboarding of their demo uh, devices, or vendor demo devices in the stores. And they removed the the uh, the requirement of dealing with MAC addresses. So previously, they were having to register every single MAC address of every single uh, device that they had in each and every store in order to onboard them in their specific VLAN for, for isolation between vendors. Now they've just created a key per vendor. They onboard their devices. Everything uh, is automatically onboarded, encrypted, and uh, it's just a... It's just a very seamless experience. Then if you look at the second example, you have a very large uh, K-12 school district in the US where they've leveraged our uh, IT assurance service to, uh, uh, to provision a personalized PSK for each and every student and staff member in, in the school district. So we're talking about 20,000 uh, plus devices uh, that are associated with, uh, with their uh, identity data. This was very easy to accomplish at scale, and that actually helped them because they had this identity tracking. They were able to, you know, identify uh, issues of uh, ab abusing the network by by students uh, because they had a mapping of a specific device to a specific user that uh, personalized key. Now, uh, we also had examples of retailers, uh, specifically in Europe, where they they leverage the uh, MPSK solution for, for their stored devices. But for them, the important uh, point was the ease of key rotation mechanism. So what, what you've actually, uh, you can actually do is uh, deploy, uh, deploy a key, run it for say six months, and then say every six months I need to rotate this credential. So we are providing an easy way to uh, let the let the customers do the credential rotation without affecting client connectivity. Right? So they have a, a time window when they can migrate from the old credential, from the old key to the new one without disrupting the connectivity. The other one is uh, also a very interesting example. One of the top universities in the United States, uh, due to the compliance requirements, they used to have open SSIDs for all their students and IT devices. Uh, they were doing MAC authentication previously. They've actually moved to uh, an IoT assurance to MPSK SSID, where we are talking about every student uh, having their own PSK that they actually got using the self onboarding portal. And they also got the IoT devices like washing machines and things like that uh, on that same network, but they're segmented into a different network segment. And finally, one of the large tech enterprises, they've uh, they've used the uh, MPSK and and the uh, PSK identity for just giving getting the visibility of all their <laughs> devices in the lab. So they're dealing with thousands of lab devices that they they were having trouble finding before because you know their their test devices. How do you uh, how do you want to manage them? So that was the perfect, uh, perfect solution for them. Any, well, it says uh, from the social media, uh, IoT client onboarding solutions for WPA3. Uh, is that something? WPA3 is something we are looking at. We are actively investigating how to do this right. We again, we want to avoid the uh, the MAC address registration thing, but again, we want to do it seamlessly. So actively investigating. Okay, so just closing it out, I know you guys are a tough crowd uh, to please. Uh, hopefully you have seen some uh, like you know, gems in what we have done through the mystification. There are primarily a few takeaways. Simplifying the whole, like you know, what, what seems like a colonoscopy exercise, dealing with creating multiple policies, simplifying that to the umpteenth degree. That is number one. Okay. All that is possible because of a microservices cloud architecture, and you saw like you know how Marvis can now give you and stitch the client to cloud journey all the way from association, all the way the client getting out to the internet and authentication authorization being a key part of it. Uh